today you are going to take notes on the Constitution of our country. I'll also send out, uh, send around, or this will be on the front table. I'm going to take a look at kind of a, a replica of our Constitution. We the people. You're going to take notes on this, and this is also uh, just overview of the things that we have already gone through in our three branches of government chart and things like that. All right, so how does our national government know what to do? Like how, where did those rules come from? So after we declared our independence, those founding fathers, they created, you know, on July 12th, they created the Articles of Confederation. And then we lived under those rules, kind of said what they, what they could do, but they realized that it wasn't working. So in 1787, they decided to meet in Philadelphia, founding fathers, and they came together and they said, you know what, we need to write new instructions for our, our rules to keep our country together. And so the instructions come from the Constitution, it tells Congress what they can and cannot do, tells the President what they can and cannot do, and it also creates the Supreme Court and the federal judges know what they can and cannot do. So the essential questions, um, in addition to the ones for the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence, are what are the powers of the U.S. government as established by the Constitution, what is the purpose of the preamble of the Constitution, and what are the roles of our three branches of government? These are the questions that are going to guide the test in addition to the ones on the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. So everything should answer these questions. So some of the basics. Just a reminder that our first rules of government were called the Articles of Confederation. We scrapped those and wrote a new Constitution, new rules for our government. Um, this is known as the supreme law of the land. Now, sometimes when I say, what is the supreme law of the land? Kids go, oh, treat others as you want to be treated. That's the golden rule. The supreme law of the land is the Constitution in the United States. Um, we all have remembered that there are three branches, okay? There's the executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch. The other thing that the Constitution created, which confuses students on the test, is the idea that in addition to these three levels, we also, um, sorry, these three branches, it created two levels. It actually said we're going to have two levels of government. This is called federalism. So it created a national government in Washington, D.C., and then it also created some roles for the states. Now, some kids will be like, well, don't we have local governments? We do, but those were not outlined in the Constitution. So we're talking about the Constitution. Pretty cool that the rules of our government that we've had uh, since 1789 are only 4,500 words, okay? You can see this if you go to Washington, D.C. It's stored in the National Archives. Um, the father of the Constitution is known as James Madison, written in the summer of 1787, and then it was finally approved April 30th, 1789. It's the oldest Constitution uh, that was written that... Pretty uh, cool that our government has been able to last that long, and the rules for our government have been able to last that long. Um, there are seven articles to the Constitution, but there are nine parts. There's the preamble, which we have gone through. This is simply the introductory statement. The Declaration of Independence has an introductory statement. So does the Constitution. This describes the purpose of our government. Then there are seven articles or sections that are original to the Constitution. And then anything that came after that, those are called amendments to the Constitution. Okay, there's been 27 since uh, 1789, and the first 10 happened right away. Those were the Bill of Rights. Those were the rights of the people. When people started reading this, they're like, this only outlines what the government can do. What about the rights of the people? And so right away, the Founding Fathers came up with a list of rights that are for the people. This is what's referred to as the Bill of Rights, and that was added in 1791. We're going to take a look at each of these sections. We've already looked at the preamble, so we're not going to spend a lot of time with that, but we're going to go out and describe what these articles are. So the purpose of government, the preamble, this is when you did it on this worksheet. So I'm just going to show you a review. This is the purpose of our government. You have that worksheet to study. And you actually did that preamble in action, so we're not going to go through that again. And then we have, skip that, 
Now we're going to get to the articles. So the supreme law of the land, Constitution, we're going to look at these articles. So it's organized into seven articles. First article, Article 1, see this right here, okay? Um, so the first article created the legislative branch. Legislative, L, stands for lawmaking or legislate to make laws. Um, I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see. I'm going to I'm gonna get out of the picture for a second. Um, and so the Article 1 created the legislative branch. Um, this is the building that they meet in. This is the seat of our government. This is the Capitol building. The Senate meets on one side, the House of Representatives on the other side. Under the Constitution, Article 1 said, you know what, let's have a two-part legislative branch. This was one of the arguments at the Constitutional Convention. Um, they were saying, how are we going to have each of these states represented? And some people were saying we should have equal representation. Others said, no, we should have proportional representation. And finally, they came up with this idea called the Great Compromise, where they said we're going to have par a two-house legislature. One house is going to be made up of equal representation. The other house is going to ba be based on proportional representation. This is what made Ben Franklin go back to the meeting and have it carry on, because before that, he said it's not going to work. And so currently, we have two representatives from every state. So we have 100 senators. Um, our current senators in Minnesota are Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith. Tina Smith is running for re-election because she was appointed to her position when Al Franken resigned. Then the smaller, um, the bigger house, but the one that has less power per se, would be the House of Representatives. And this is based on a state's population that is um, determined every 10 years with a census. In Minnesota, we have eight representatives. So Minnesota is broken down into eight congressional districts. Um, the most important job of the legislative branch is to write bills that hopefully become laws. They don't just get to dictate what becomes a law. It has to be signed into law by the president. And if the president doesn't sign it, then they can override it. And we'll get to that in a second. Now, there are some laws that Congress might m make that people will say, hey, wait a minute. For instance, when we did the um, Louisiana Purchase, where in the Constitution does it say that the federal government can purchase land? And so they decided to say, well, it doesn't clearly say that. But it does say that we have the right to make laws that are necessary and proper in order to uh, be better for our country. And so this is known as the elastic clause. Um, Article 1 lists actions that the Congress may not do as addition to, in addition to how you can become one. And, um, you know, it puts limits on its power as well. Um, the legislative branch is a clear representation of representative democracy. We choose people to be our senators and members of the House of Representatives to represent some extras over here. Legislate means to make laws. A bill is a proposed law. So if you remember, I'm just a bill, I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Okay, I know I'm not a singer. And then you'll hear me say this a lot this year. Act. Act is another word for a law. So if a law is passed, it typically in the title has the word act in it. So Act as another word for a law in social studies. All right, next. Um, making sure that when you did your um, notes and highlighted, you highlighted the L, legislate, makes laws. They meet in the Capitol building. In the House of Representatives, we currently have 435 members. Eight of them are from Minnesota. These are the things that are just given to the job of the House of Representatives. Something important is if um, somebody thinks that the president or a judge is doing something wrong, they can charge that person or charge the president with a crime. This is part of checks and balances. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that person is removed from office. So part of checks and balances, the House of Representatives will indict or charge somebody with a crime. And then they, when you're charged with a crime, you're not found, you're not guilty. You have to stand a trial. So the trial would happen in the Senate chambers, 
And then when we get to judicial branch, the judge in charge of that trial, which you'll notice was also blue, would be the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So those things are all uh, related. So these are the things that are just specifically with the Senate. These are the things that both of them can do. Number seven is something that just happened um, with the approval of the uh, new Chief Justice, not Chief Justice, the new Justice to the Supreme Court, Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, President Trump had nominated him, but it had to be approved. So this is approved by the Senate. That happened on Saturday. They voted. They approved it. So now he is actually a judge. So that's part of the checks and balances as well. Article 2 created the executive branch. The executive branch is the branch that where we get the president and the vice president. It's also the cabinet. The president cannot do his job all by himself. He needs people to help him. And so he has uh, cabinet members that are nominated and then approved to help him carry out his, law, his job. The president's main job is to carry out the laws that are made by Congress. So if somebody doesn't like what the president is doing when he's carrying out and enforcing the laws, they should write their congressman to ask them to change the laws. Okay. Um, under the executive branch, we pretty much focus that it's the president that is the symbol. Um, they serve for four years. They can do that twice. Now, the original Constitution did not limit the term limit for a president. Um, the first five presidents of the United States actually had to kind of iron out the kinks of these new rules of our government. And so what ended up happening is George Washington only served two terms in office. He set a precedent. And so every president after that followed his, his guideline, didn't serve more than two terms. Now, that is until FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was elected to office four times. It was after that that they made an amendment or a change to the Constitution, so 22nd Amendment, where they limited you to running only two terms. Okay? And again, the job is to enforce or carry out the laws that are passed by Congress. The third article... Oops, I forgot this part. Make sure that you have underlined and highlighted the things on your chart. This is in your Schoology account. The third article created the judicial branch or the court system, the federal court system. They meet and do their job at the Supreme Court building. They wanted to create a national court system because under the Articles of Confederation, they were unable to settle disputes between the states. So the president has to nominate a judge checks and balances, the Senate has to approve or confirm it. That's just what happened with Judge Kavanaugh. Um, a judge, a federal judge or a Supreme Court justice serve for life or until they retire. So if they die, then they have to be replaced. If they retire, they have to be replaced. If they are naughty, then they can be impeached and removed from office. That's never happened. Um, on the top court, the Supreme Court, there are nine justices. Um, that's an odd number so that when they're hearing cases, they can have, you know, a actual majority. The main one is the Chief Justice of the Ch Supreme Court. That currently is John Roberts. The word justice means a judge. Something that's hard to understand is that the Supreme Court interprets what laws mean and they um, decide if somebody's rights have been violated, not if someone is guilty or not. So they hear cases about the law and decide what they mean. So, um, if there was a question, true or false, on the test, the Supreme Court decides if somebody is guilty of a crime or not, you should say false. They do not. They decide if things are constitutional or not. They hear cases about people's rights and about the laws. Again, there are nine Supreme Court justices that interpret the law. They declare laws un unconstitutional. Part of, um, if a president is impeached, charged with a crime, and they're having a trial in the Senate building, the judge over the impeachment trial in the Senate chambers. Other articles of the um, Constitution, Article 4, 